Well, good morning, saints, or good afternoon, and welcome to our Wednesday afternoon Bible study on this Ash Wednesday in which we begin our potential season, a penitential season of Lent, where we remember our Lord's sacrifice for all of us, and where we are reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But we believe that our spirit will go to be with the Lord and that when he returns this dust will be reconfigured and uh, joined to our, our spirit and we will have a new glorified body in that new kingdom, that new heaven and earth. So saints, today we're continuing with our study of the book of Judges. Today we're on Judges chapter 10. We'll be looking at the whole chapter of Judges chapter 10. The theme of our study is sin's dead end. Sin's dead end. And, and we'll be discussing that in a moment. So once again, welcome. I pray you all are going to get out there and get your ashes. I'll get mine this evening. Uh, so let's bow our heads in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. And now, O oh God, that you've died, risen from the dead, and you've sent your spirit, may your spirit, which lives and works in each and every one of us, now teach us what we need to learn. And now, O oh God, give me accuracy of interpretation and clarity of speech, and may we all apply what we learn to our daily lives of witness that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So chapter 10, what is chapter 10 about? Well, you know, the uh, we, we went through last week that period of King Abimelech. He made himself king. And we know he's dead now. We know all the problems that Israel had uh, with, with Abimelech. But now, in this chapter, we'll see the rise of two judges. The first is Judge Tola, Judge Tola, and he comes along after the uh, tyranny of, of Abimelech. And we don't know much about Tola, uh, but that he judged Israel for 23 years, and uh, he served faithfully and died in honor. So there was nothing wrong with, with uh, uh, Tola. Then arose the next judge, Judge Jair, J-A-I-R. He's mentioned in chapter 10. Now, he judged Israel 22 years, and he had 30 sons who rode circuit and uh, administered justice fairly during his, uh, uh, during his time or his watch as judge of Israel. But after uh, Judge Jair, as Israel always did, Israel fell back into idolatry. As a result, uh, the Lord gave Israel over to the Philistines and the Ammonites for 18 years. Imagine it took 18 years for Israel. This is a review of the chapter for Israel to even ask forgiveness or to call upon the Lord. In addition to Gilead, where all this was really taking place, uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim were also invaded uh, by the Philistines and Ammonites. At this point, uh, Israel called out to the Lord, but he would not listen to them. He wanted to teach them something they had to learn. However, after they accepted God's judgment, after they confessed their sins, put away their idols, uh, then God responded in love as he always does. He forgave and restored them, and then he brought about their new judge, George Jephthah. Of course, Jephthah won't be mentioned till chapter 11. So with that in mind, saints, let's, uh, uh, let's um, turn to our chapter, Judges chapter 10. <clears throat> the first verse, after Abimelech, <laughs> the wicked so-called king, there arose to save Israel, save in this case in the Hebrew would be judged. There arose to save Israel Tola, and his job was to deliver and protect Israel. And uh, we, when we studied jo uh, Tola, we learned that he lived near the tabernacle of Shiloh, 
and he was there to impart justice and to render, render judgment. And he was a man of the tribe of Issachar, for it says he was the son of Pua, the son who was the son of Dodo, who was a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir, in the mountains of Ephraim. Okay, so he seemed to be a good man. If he had been otherwise, the scriptures would tell us. Verse 2. And he judged, once again, he imparted justice, rendered judgment over Israel 23 years, and he died and he was buried in Shamir where he lived. So he loved, he served, pardon me, faithfully, and he died in honor. Verse 3. After him arose Jer, a Gideonite, and he judged Israel 22 years, so he served faithfully as well. <coughs> and he was of the tribe of Manasseh, 40. Now he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. Okay, they were honorable young men. They also had 30 towns, which are called Havoth Jer. To this day, Oba Havoth in the Hebrew means anointed, anointed by Jer to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. So he had 30 sons who rode circuit and administered justice, almost like in the old early days of our, of our country, country preacher riding the circuit, going to various churches. And uh, verse 5, and by the way, these 30 sons were appointed by Jer. He couldn't be everywhere, so he appointed men uh, to do so, almost like uh, what Moses did uh, with his elders. And uh, actually his judges, they were called judges. And verse 5, and Jer died and was buried in Camon. Camon. So he uh, faithfully served as well. He faithfully served Israel. But now at his death, there's a void. And unfortunately, that void was fear filled with evil. Verse 6, it says, Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. What did they do? And served the Baals and the Ashtaroths, the gods of Syria and the gods of Sidon the gods of Moab, and the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So once the judges died, Israel again did evil by worshiping Canaanite gods that imparted gods, that imported gods as well and forgot the Lord their God. Idolatry once again entered the fabric of Israel. It's interesting to note that they would do this, worship the gods of the very people who were mistreating them and abusing them in the past. But sometimes like a moth drawn to a flame, right? <clears throat> Verse 6, so the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and uh, he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. So in other words, God's anger was kindled because they allowed others to replace him in their lives. And he decided to discipline them in order to restore them. We have to understand that's what happens. Uh, verse 8, from that year, they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for 18 years. All the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, in Gilead. So this is Gilead that's being punished. Uh, and uh, all because they had turned from the Lord their God. Okay. Go to verse 9. Moreover, the people of, Ham of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also. Okay. Against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim. So that Israel was severely distressed. We see here that because of their sin, uh, Gilead's sin is spread to other territories within Israel. So you, you, you see, saints, how when we do things, certain things that are evil in the sight of God, it could invade our families. It could have a ripple effect. Amen. So we see here that the Ammonites not only subdued Gilead, but also devastated Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. Sin, saints, sin 
always brings severe distress. And this stress in this case was wide and severe. It spread to other tribes within Israel. And in verse 10, here's where we see God rebukes the sin. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have, we have sinned against you because we have forsaken our God and served the Baals. Now it took them 18 years to do this. 18 years for Israel to repent. They finally did confess forsaking God and serving idols. But because of their continued rebelliousness, we show that God stepped it up a bit by rebuking them. God reminds them of his past deliverance and their rejection of him. Verse 11 says, So the Lord said to the children of Israel, Now he did this through a prophetic utterance. He had a prophet come forward and speak his words. Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon and from the Philistines? Twelve also the Sidonians and Malachites and Maonians oppressed you and you cried out to me and I delivered you from their hand. Didn't I do all this for you? Thirteen, and yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Okay, so now he's saying, look, I took care of you. I backed you up. I knocked away your enemies. And what did you do? You went right back to those who oppress you. And now you're calling for me again. So basically, I'm going to instruct you in the way to go. I'm not going to come back here and basically keep being your patsy. Okay, verse 13. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods, therefore I will deliver you no more. The Lord is putting his foot down. He's saying, hey, you wanted it, you got it. You want to serve these gods, let them take care of you. And 14, he says this, what I just said, go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time in distress. Okay, if you're going to build your future on them, if you believe and trust in them, why do you call upon me? Call upon them. Because he's saying, I will not, I will not deliver you again. Sin now finally brings a dead end for Israel. That's why it's called the dead end. Okay, Sin's dead end. In other words, God will take it only so far. And then he says, forget it. You want it, you got it. But in verse 15, and the children of Israel said to the Lord, we have sinned. See, that's what the Lord was looking for. We have sinned. Do to us whatever you seem best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. You see, strengthened and renewed by renewed dependence on God. And uh, I mean, dependent, dependence on God and repentance. Gilead would stand against the oppressor. They uh, know they have, they have no grounds for justice or mercy before God. But they plead anyway based upon God's love and his uh, desire for friendship with them. Israel now takes the first step in repentance, that is confession of sin. For once again, the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever you seem best to you, and deliver us this day, we pray. They even accepted God's judgment. Whatever you decide to do, Lord, do it. But Lord, please permit us to confess our sins. Please, please permit us to die in faith. And verse 16, So they put away the foreign gods, from among them and serve the Lord and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel once again the Lord's compassion his mercy he could not bear to see his children crying and moaning uh, and so he had to do something verse 17 then the people of Ammon gathered together and camped in Gilead I guess they're saying we're going to get these Israelites well we're going to get them now and the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah Okay, so Israel's getting ready to confront them. Israel's probably saying, hey, we, we, we're not going to deal with this. You're getting ready. We're getting ready too. And verse 18, and the people, the leaders of Gilead said to one another, who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? And he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So they needed a captain, but that is the, but the only one they have was God, the Lord. So Step two is put away idols and worship the Lord. This was the Lord's good plan in punishing them in the first place. So saints, that's our message uh, for, I'm not our message, our Bible study for this Ash Wednesday afternoon. 
what do we learn from it? What can we apply to our daily living about, uh, uh, about the uh, judgeships of uh, Tola and Jer and also this final episode where uh, they're attempting to uh, get back some things they had lost. Well, first of all, we have to remember from this text, God disciplines in order to restore his people. God's discipline is not meant to destroy, but to reform, to change, to transform, to get us to see things the way he sees them and gets, gives us the strength to walk in them. You see, after the death of Abimelech, Israel again turned from the Lord into the false gods of the Canaanites. The Lord then took away his hand of protection and allowed the Philistines and Ammonites to conquer them for 18 years. He refused to uh, forgive and relieve them in order to bring them to sincere repentance. So he had to let them know, you can't keep doing this and think you're going to get away with it. Next lesson, disaster is inevitable when you turn from God. Because of the Israel's idolatry, all the children, not just some of the children, not, not the Jewish members of the church, but all of them were oppressed for 18 years. God's anger was kindled because Israel allowed others to replace God in their hearts. The scriptures say our God is a jealous God. He will share his deity or his power with no one, nor should he. And in lesson three, compromise with evil is always devastating. In addition to Gilead, we are told the Amorites or Ammonites crossed over Jordan and invaded Judah, both of them. Not just Judah, but Benjamin and Ephraim. As a result, Israel was severely distressed because the enemy was branching out now. Um, verse, I mean, uh, lesson four, sin always brings severe distress. Saints, even though Israel cried to God for relief, the Lord rebuked them for their disobedience. He told Israel he would not deliver them again. But this prompted them to repent, to forgive, and, and this, pardon me, this prompted them to repent, destroy their idols, and return to God. He in turn forgave and restored them out of love. So you see, this was the end result of what God was doing. He punishes not to destroy, but to correct. In our final lesson, God punishes to restore, not condemn. I just said that. Israel could have limited their distress if they had immediately turned to God in true repentance, but of course they didn't. It took 18 years. God could not stand, however, to see his children suffer so. So out of love, when they repented, he removed their enemies and restored their joy in him. So saints, those are the lessons for today in our chapter 10. Next week, we'll look on to chapter 11 and see what else uh, good old Jeremiah has for us since, not Jeremiah, uh, 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 the good old uh, Moses has for us in discussing the book of Judges this time, uh, this crazy time uh, in the time of Israel when they had no king. So, uh, saints, God bless you. I hope it has been a blessing to you. Uh, remember, it's Ash Wednesday, so uh, make your way to church. Get the ashes upon your forehead and remember God's great sacrifice for us and remember why we need that, because we're just dust. And without God, we can't be anymore. That spirit either spends eternity with God or away from God. And by faith, if we trust in Jesus, like the picture behind me, we will have eternal life. So God bless you and keep you. See you next Wednesday for our midweek Wednesday afternoon Bible class. In Jesus' holy name, amen.